It's time for Inside Seminole Basketball with Leonard Hamilton, breaking down game-changing plays, momentum-shifting moves, can-miss matchups. The inside scoop on the team and what's next for the Knolls as they look to make another tournament run. ABC 27 presents Inside Seminole Basketball with Leonard Hamilton. Live from Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. Sponsored by these businesses. Good evening, Seminole fans. We welcome you to Inside Seminole Basketball with Coach Leonard Hamilton. Tom Block pinch hitting for Jeff Colhane. And we say greetings to you and yours wherever you may be listening on the Seminole Sports Network or if you're viewing in the Tallahassee area on ABC 27 or if you're part of the audience right here at Glory Days Grill. Hope you're having a good Monday. And, Coach, it is good to see you as we'll talk some Seminole basketball for the next 60 minutes. And uh, I know it was, a, it was a tough week for your team. I'll let you react, first of all, to a, to a Boston College game on Saturday that uh, you guys dug a hole early but uh, fought and clawed back, got it to four points a couple of times, but just couldn't quite get all the way back to, to, to come away with the win. Well, you can from looking at the statistics, uh, you, you, you love the, the uh, force of team, the 20 turnovers. I think we had 15 steals. And I think we, we had, what, 13 offensive rebounds, I believe, or some double-figure rebound, uh, offensive rebounds. And when you're getting steals, you, most of the time you convert a high percentage of those into baskets for you and to, to force 15 turnovers and, and not make them productive for you was a challenge that, that, that bothers especially the first and second half, uh, getting that many offensive rebounds and not being strong enough or physical enough or uh, what have you to, to uh, get fouled or get offensive or get a basket was extremely challenging. And, most of the time, when you when you get steals and forced to turnovers, you you get out in transition, and that's where we have normally have been at our very best, even taking the ball to the basket or or, um, or getting some wide open threes. Obviously, our three point shooting was a little off during this particular game, but I got to give Boston College credit, especially as it relates to defending um, Green, Darren Green. Mm -hmm. People are able to load up on him on the perimeter, and because we have not developed an interior uh, threat, you know, we we're not consistently throwing the ball in the paint uh, and coming away with what we need. Um, when you look back at some of the guys we've had in the past, we've been able to throw the ball in to the to, into the lane, and at the end of the day, you always find. Uh, that they have to give a certain amount of defensive attention to our inside game, which always loosens up the perimeter game. And we haven't been able to establish it all year. So uh, I have to give them credit. They were all the more mature team. They played like it. They executed, made very few mistakes. Every time we made a defensive mistake, they made us play. Even when we contested the shots, they, make the, they made tough twos, tough threes. So this is who we are. And the thing I like to say, I I'm just so impressed with the, the consistency that our fans have been out supporting us. Uh, we, we, we can't say that, that they've abandoned us because we're having a subpar year. They have done a tremendous job just being there to support us, and it makes a lot of difference. And, but we need to get through this year and make sure that we show some signs of improvement. Coach, one of the bright spots in that loss, Caleb Mills uh, just put on a, a clinic there at the free throw line. He said a FSU record for ACC games with 17 made three th free throws, finished with a, I think it matched his career high with 27 points. When he gets going, he can score for you. Well, there's no doubt about that. But we, what we need is a little more of a balance with, with everyone creating high percentage opportunities for their teammates. And I felt that we just passed the ball around a lot, and we didn't get into the lane to create shots for each other. Uh, th th those are things that experienced guys do naturally that we have not developed yet. And we, we're very happy to see Caleb, though. Uh, he took advantage of those opportunities. And he's probably the guy who, without having Matt, um, Cle Matt Cleveland available, Matthew Cleveland, we definitely needed uh, um, meals to step up and, and give us some productivity. He did that, and, and, you know, when you fall behind, you have to exert such energy to come back. And I know if you had the, the easy button on this, you'd, you'd hit it already. But, but what do you see in terms of some of the slow starts that we've seen in a few of your games of late? Well, I, I think that 
we are we are actually <laughs> uh, benefiting from the success that we've had against our opponents over the years. I mean, like I don't think we had lost to at home to Boston College in what, eight or nine times, and Pittsburgh was, was the same thing. In Miami, we had beaten them seven straight times in a, a row, and and they, they there was a sense of urgency by those guys, and they've been really, really mentally and emotionally uh, invested into preparing for Florida State. And I told our guys, we're standing on some big shoulders of guys who have established a winning tradition here in our, in our program, and people are taking every opportunity to, to get payback. <laughs> Yeah, they've had it circled on the uh, on the calendar as they, as they match up. All right, we're just getting started with head coach Leonard Hamilton. We will have a, uh, a player. Chandler Jackson is going to join us a little bit later on in the program. We will talk more about the week ahead and uh, what's ahead for Florida State over the next couple of weeks as uh, we finish up this 22-23 uh, season. I'll remind you that, uh, and those of you who are here certainly know it, Glory Days Grill is the perfect spot for game day and every day of the week with daily food and drink specials, award-winning burgers, and the best darn wings in town. When it's time to pack the tuck, Glory Days Grill supports the Florida State basketball team. Glory Days, home of inside Seminole basketball. Again, more questions for Coach Leonard Hamilton are straight ahead. We are just getting started. Stay with us here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Good evening again. Time now for What's on Tap, presented by the official craft beer of the Florida State Seminoles, Oyster City Brewing Company. Check out the tap room on Gain Street. Let's talk about this week, uh, Coach. You, you actually, uh, I don't know if you'd call it a break, but you've got <laughs> one game on Saturday instead of two, uh, which does give you some more time on, on the court. What, how will you use this week? What might that enable you to do? And then we'll talk about the matchup on Saturday. We have a game on Saturday, then we have another game on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not really week off, is that what you're telling me? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, it, it's, uh, it's a double-edged sword. <laughs> you, you, we don't play in this week, but we got to play uh, North Carolina at home on Monday. So this is uh, – everyone has these scenarios uh, for them each year. So that's part of the scheduling in ACC. But we have, you know, like Matthew, uh, he's has, he has the muscle spasms that he's dealing with gives him a chance to hopefully heal up a little bit and we, we're hoping that we have him available but you know everyone kind of recuperates uh, their therapy is, is different individual to individual so let's hope that that he maybe can make some progress and be available on, on Saturday because we know it's going to be a real tough game for us Miami is playing real well they they have a team that they have been able to bring some kids in from some transfers then they, they fit real well. They play in so unselfish, and their defense is very good. They're one of the more challenging teams to play against because, you know, they have a, a small center that really they play in mostly a five-out type of system where you know, many times they don't have anyone posting up, which makes it very difficult for, for big guys. This is the, one of the better teams in the ACC. Uh, I think they'll represent our conference very well once they get in the NCAA tournament. Coach, with, with the extra time off, I know Baba Miller has not played much basketball at all, but he has uh, largely in part or partly because of Matthew Cleveland not being available, played more minutes of late. Does, do, do the extra days give him a little bit of time to go back and evaluate or you to look a little more closely at what he did well, what he, what he needs to improve upon from that extra playing time? Well, he's like most freshmen, uh, even though he's extremely talented. Um, he needs time in the gym, confidence that goes along with learning things from repetition over and over and over, um, working on his free throws, working on his jump shot. Because uh, he's adjusting not only being thousands of miles away from home, but a new system, new teammates. And he's been with one set of team for, for since he's 12 years old. So it's a big adjustment for him. And plus, the athleticism that exists in the ACC is extremely challenging. And, and growing up and just dealing with the, I don't want to say pressure, but the moment, you know, just the excitement that, that goes with playing at, at this level. There's a tremendous amount of adjustments for him. I think, but he's, he's showing you glimpses of, of how, what his potential is really like. 
Like the other night, he had three for, he was three for four from three uh, on the road, I believe, which means that he has that, you know, that type of ability. He's blocked some shots. He moves well. He passes the ball. He just got to get a little more experience in our system. His best basketball, no doubt, is ahead of him. No question about that. You mentioned the short turnaround with the UNC game uh, a week from tonight. So a reminder to those here, those listening, uh, we need you at the tuck next Monday night. It'll be senior <laughs> night. Uh, we won't have an inside seminal basketball here at Glory Days. But uh, I think only one senior is going to be honored this year, which speaks to the, to the youth and, and, and part of the growing pains you've had with some inexperience. But Cleveland Yates, yeah. uh, I think, is, is going to represent next week. And that, that's a guy who, who doesn't get a ton of playing time, but you see him every day. There's a lot of unsung heroes on your team. So I'll give you a moment to talk a little bit about Cleveland and, uh, and the bench bunch, if you will. Well, there's no doubt that Cleveland has meant an awful lot to us over the years. Um, He's a vocal leader. Uh, he, he's the one who prays over all of our meals that we have, so we're we going to miss that. Um, but but he, he's a guy, he's our energy guy. Uh, he, he's the hype man, so to speak. And, and he's been faithful. Uh, he he he's demonstrates his maturity when we're having our team meetings. He speaks up for those things that he thinks we need to improve on. He knows our system so well, they can help the, the new younger guys at all positions. And, and it's, it's not, it's unusual for us to have only one senior. I, I, I look back when we won the ACC tournament, we had six seniors that graduated that year. And uh, that just shows a little bit about how the, the youth that we have on this team. One of the things that's been consistent, whether it's a small class, a big class, though, you're – your, your seniors, your four-year guys go on to graduate. The number 73 out of 75 guys that have been four-year players for you, four-year scholarship guys have graduated. I, I, obviously, you put an emphasis on that. I don't know if that's part of your sales pitch, but can you, can you offer a little bit behind the scenes in terms of how you motivate your guys to be so productive in the classroom? Well, unlike most um, sports, um, the fact is that only a few, a small percentage of your players would go on and have an opportunity to play in the NBA. And some will have some opportunities in Europe uh, in their professional leagues there. But in reality, 95% uh, of your guys will be uh, working 9 to 5 in, some, in, in most cases. And, and you can't lose sight of that. You know, they're student athletes. That's where the term is. And we, I know how much graduating from college meant to me and my family and the other guys that we've coached over the years. And sometimes you have to make sure that the players understand how important that is. And I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that our guys understand that getting the education is very important. We place a lot of emphasis on it. Uh, each coach ha has, a, has a group of guys. He's the academic coach for each, for each. Each player will have an academic coach. We divide the team up. And those guys, our staff, We'll stay on top of everything and so that we can make sure we, we always are involved with um, making sure the kids are, are taking care of the academic business. We, uh, Charlie, does a, Hogan does a great job. He's been with us now for a number of years, and he plays a, a big role in making sure that we all, uh, he communicates well for us so that we can make sure that our kids are on track for graduation. Well, congratulations to you for that. You're being commended for all the work behind the scenes that goes into that uh, with your players over the years. All right, we'll uh, get back to some on-the-court questions momentarily. Did you know that FSU Athletics is self-supported and is not funded by tax dollars? Because of this, we rely on fans just like you to join Seminole Boosters so your teams have the best possible chance to achieve success on and off the field. Seminole Booster memberships start at just $5 per month and come with great membership benefits. Go online to SeminoleBoosters.com to learn more or join. That is SeminoleBoosters.com. More to come from here at Glory Days. This is the Seminole Sports Network, and this is uh, Inside Seminole Basketball from Learfield. Ready to get... Hello again, and uh, welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about that graduation rate, uh, Coach, and I, I failed to mention Cleveland Yates will uh, graduate later this year, I think in the fall, and that will move that number to 74 out of 76 on your four-year guys. So 
again, well done. Uh, one of the, the young stars in this basketball team has uh, joined us, and I'll, I'll chat with him in a, in a couple of segments. Chandler Jackson is here. Coach, uh, b- before we get to that interview with him, and, and I'm told, by the way, it was his birthday yesterday, I guess, as well. I won't sing. I don't know if you did. I know you've got that in you. Uh, but, but just tell us a, a little bit about the young fellow who has uh, seen more and more minutes, obviously got a slow start to the year because he was injured, but uh, working more and more into your rotation now. Well, he's, he's done a remarkable job for a guy who missed eight weeks of practice. And then when, when he got healthy from his thumb injury, he only practiced two or three days. And he was thrown right into the fire. So that, that whole scenario has been similar to the other challenges that we've had this year. But Chandler is making great progress. He just needs more experience so he can gain more confidence. He's a good shooter. He makes good decisions. Uh, he, he, he's a coachable youngster. Uh, he has a high basketball IQ. And I, I think his best basketball is ahead of him as well. Um, he has a, has a big body. Uh, I was teasing him this morning that maybe he should go over and see with Norvell and maybe see if he'd be a running back. Of course, <laughs> I was just teasing. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> don't get any ideas. <laughs> no, <that's right. laughs> we don't need to make that mistake. <laughs> but, um, no, he's coming along just fine. I think that his best ball, best basketball is ahead of him. He's a uh, intelligent youngster, and and he's he's a great Seminole. Off to a, to a good start, and we'll we'll chat with Chan a little bit more. Did was there birthday cake involved yesterday, or uh? no? We had yesterday. We had the day off. They they sang happy birthday to him today in practice. Okay, and, and is that is a hoop? I just want you to know who who's the lead. I mean, who's the best voice you got? I mean, I know this is your side gig. So well, a, Matthew Cleveland normally uh, gives us the. Okay. <laughs> so we're all on key. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we'll have to get mad out here. You don't want to hear me sing. Trust me. Uh, well, well, continuing the theme about young guys, uh, uh, you know, Cam Corn's an- a- another one who's uh, he's had to play a lot of minutes for you this year. And, uh, you know, there's growing pains that go with that, but there'll also be a return on that investment uh, later in his career. He had eight points, five boards against Boston College. Uh, how has he been improving week to week, game to game for you? Well, he's had the biggest challenge, similar to, to Bubba. Because, you know, he's more of a versatile player. We had planned to use him at the four, so to speak, and the five, in the per- other words, perimeter and interior. But, but obviously when we had the, the injuries of Jalen Ganey, we had to move him to the, to, to the po- uh, post position. And I think he's, 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 he's performed admirably. Um, he, but it's been, it's been tough on him because we require so much of our post guy. You know, we really – he initiates the offense with his ball screens and rolling to the front of the rim. And he has a lot of reads that he has to make and decisions that he has to make, to, whether it's a side screen, a step-up screen, or, you know, a, a re-angle screen. And, and those things are somewhat challenging when you're coming in from high school and you, you haven't been exposed to this level. But I think he's done an outstanding job, and he's showing glimpses of, 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 of what he can be uh, down the road. I, I know this is was Ganey's first year here, so he hasn't been in your system, but at, how is he staying engaged or, or what presence does he offer even though he's uh, obviously been out injured? Well, he's a fast learner. Uh, obviously, he's a, a graduate student, academic all Ivy League, two years, defensive player of the year uh, in the Ivy League. So he comes with a little more experience than some of our other guys. That's why we miss him so much. And then plus he has the athletic ability to switch one through five. In other words, when he switches off on a point guard, he's quick and fast enough to contain him. And that's what you like to have in a post guy, which, which makes it very difficult for your, your uh, people to run their offense when they always have someone in front of them quick and athletic. So we, we miss that. Plus he's um, our best shot blocker. And so when you make mistakes defensively, he can, he can make up for them. Right. You race him back, kind of like um, the, the Bernard James did when he was here. Uh, he led the league in block shots. And so we could pressure more knowing that we had a, 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 a aircraft carrier in the middle <laughs> that, that challenged shots going to people getting into the lane. And we missed that as well. Going back to the younger guys in particular, Coach, uh, whether you're you know, having a, a very successful season, whether you're struggling a little bit, when you're coming right from high school to college, 
it, it can get to be a grind when you get to this point of the season. And you guys have been going since, I don't know, when you first rolled the ball out. I know there's summer workouts, but September, maybe late September. And, and here you are, you still got a few weeks left. Uh, is, is part of it a mental challenge for those guys as well? Well, that's what they like, to be honest with you. I think guys come in with the expectations and uh, they, they get excited about playing at this level. Um, now, what happens is once they get this late into the season, that it does become a grind because you have, like with him, game on Saturday, game on Monday. And, and sometimes it's hard to recover. Uh, there was a time during the year we were playing guys 34, 35, somewhere out of time 40 and 37, 38 minutes. Uh, I could see little nicks and things going, starting to happen, a little soreness. And so we had to back off a little bit uh, to take some, um, you know, some time, take some, some, some heat off their bodies so that they could be fresher and have energy for the games. We had to shorten our practice, practices and some of the drills and things that we normally would have been doing with a full company of our players. We, we don't do anymore. Like the day, we, this was a preparation day. We didn't do anything physical. We debriefed from uh, the Boston College game, started on the, on the um, University of Miami game, shot, warmed up, did some stretching, shot free throws, and we let them go. Well, and while Matthew's out, uh, you're even shorter <laughs> in terms of the rotation <laughs> and what you can do at practice, unfortunately. That's just yes. the way it's been this year, though. Yes, yes. But that's part of basketball. You know, we've had two years of uh, unusual type of uh, injuries, and we had some years where we haven't had any. And so it, 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 it evens itself out over a period of time. We are talking with head basketball coach Leonard Hamilton. This is Inside Seminole Basketball and more to come from here in Tallahassee. So stay with us. This is Seminole Basketball from Learfield. I'm blocked. And a reminder, the Knowles back at it Saturday at Miami. Jeff Colhane will have the call of that one. Before we go to a question from our audience here at Glory Days, uh, let me remind you, T-Spark Enterprises, if you want a guaranteed win, call T-Spark for your next roofing or construction project. We conquer all peaks, tsparkconstruction.com. Tom Block and Coach Leonard Hamilton and uh, Chuck Walsh manning the mic out here, and I think we've got a question from the audience. Take it away. Hey, my name is Simon, and how was Kayla Mills to score so much points on Saturday? Well, Caleb is um, what you call a natural scorer. Um, he has, uh, he has a, 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 the ability to make tough shots. Some of them are too tough when I mean, he doesn't make them. Uh, <laughs> but um, he's a guy that is fearless. Uh, he's, he challenges the interior. He's developed in his three-point perimeter shot. And he, he one of the better free throw shooters on our team, and I think he he might have he really went to the free throw line quite a bit in, in our last game, and he was able to convert them to bat points for us. Uh, so Caleb is a is a very instrumental to our team, and uh, I still think his best basketball is ahead of him. Good question. Thank you. Thank you, Simon, for that question. We appreciate it, and go Knowles. Coach Caleb is somebody who, who transferred into the program a couple years ago, and I know in recent weeks you've, you've talked about uh, the transfer portal a little bit. And, and I'm curious when you're trying to coach in the middle of one season, I mean, it's tough to do both at once, and I guess the, it's, not, it's not technically open, but how do you prepare for that, or uh, what will your philosophy be as you, as you get into the offseason this year? Well, the, the portal uh, for everyone now has been accepted to be part of the new climate that we're dealing with in college basketball. Uh, last year we had over, right at 2,000 kids put their name in the portal, thinking that the grass is always greener on the other side. And it has, it has put a dent in the high school recruiting because of, um, you, you have to make a decision, do you want a 17, 18 year old, do you want a 22 or 23 year old graduate student, or a fifth year senior, guys who have been in the weight room, who played, uh, a lot of big games. They've been through the battles, been through the wars. And, and so it's putting, the, I think, it's, it's not good for overall for high school basketball in the development as it has, has always been. Because even uh, you had those 2,000 guys put their name in the, in the portal, 
450 of them didn't get scholarship offers at all. So now what are they going to do with their lives moving forward? So it wasn't a well-thought-out uh, program, uh, but it's, that's how we played against Pittsburgh. They had five transfers for graduate students in, on the floor. They're more mature. They make less mistakes. Um, they've grown. They understand basketball a little more. And, uh, that's the, the new wave, and people are going to the portal to, to fill in, and that's part of what we're going to have to do at the, at the end of the year. We just have to wait and see who's available, see can we find the right fit, and, and, and aggressively move on, move and try to recruit some of them. Stay in bigger picture with, which college bas with college basketball, Coach. There's, there's been talk, and, and I don't know where it is in committee right now, about expanding the size of the, the tournament field to 96 teams. At, at, uh, I think that's what's on the table. What's your general thought on that idea of expanding it uh, that far if it gets there? Well, I'm, I'm all excited about that. In reality, I thought you could really double the, uh, the number of teams um, because – you already have the play-in night for, for the basketball. So if you double it and everybody plays on that particular night, then you're right back to, to the three weekends. To, to the three weekends. That's why I think it's, it's very valuable. You give more schools the opportunity to participate in the tournament. I mean, that it, it, it increases the enthusiasm. Uh, it, you, you have more schools in, enjoying the experience of having an opportunity to compete for a national title. And, and, and there's no doubt that one of those teams will have a Cinderella-type story and they'll go right from not even being ranked to right to the Final Four. That'll happen because basketball parity is set in so much all over the country. And, and, with, and with the addition of the, uh, the, the portal, uh, who knows what can happen uh, if, if, if given a chance. So I'm, I'm excited about that uh, possibility. I wish they would double the field <laughs> and, and as opposed to stopping at 96. If you're going to go to 96, you might as well go to 124, <laughs> 128. Do, do you know what the time frame is on that? Absolutely not. You know, you never know uh, unless you're on one of the committees. And um, we, we have a lot of rules change that sometimes I feel like it's not necessary, but that's um, how you govern the, uh, college sports. And they they always tinkering with the rules and, and and making changes. And some of them for the for good, and some of them not so good. Any any rule change you're in favor of? I got you, I'll give you the floor right now. There's anything you want to lobby for on that front? <laughs> yeah, I, I'll lobby for doubling the field, <laughs> <laughs> so everyone could could enjoy the experience of participating in the NCAA tournament. All right, we're talking with uh, head coach Leonard Hamilton. Uh, we'll, we'll give coach a break in just a minute. Chandler will we'll come up this way. And, uh, coach, I, I asked a little bit about Chandler, but just to be a freshman and play in the ACC and play extended minutes, whether you're a point guard or not, I mean, uh, we, you know, sometimes we expect because, uh, you know, now and then you get a guy who's, who's an NBA guy, a one-and-done guy or whatever, but it's not that easy to do. I mean, it's a pretty big step up. Uh, just for freshmen in general, just your general thoughts on how you prepare your kids for that. Well, it's a more of a challenge, I think, than most people think because the, the ones who get the most notoriety are the ones who had a lofty expectations coming out of high school. But a lot of times those guys who are rated in the top McDonald's All-American, they're watching guys who nobody knew anything about play on TV, and, and half of them, you know, fall by the wayside. It's like the ones with the most publicity – in, in, in maybe bigger cities and, or got bigger followings mm -hmm. or what have you are the ones that we know the most about. But in reality, it's a challenge for, for any freshman to come in and, 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 and contribute early. It's just so much to learn. The pace is altogether different. Um, and the, the academics is a little more challenging. Um, and, and the wear and tear on your body is a little more challenging. But I think that's what guys sign up for. Uh, they grow up playing in the backyards, and shooting hoops on the, on the garage, playing on the cement courts and this on the weekend. So th th it, this is a great sport. Learn an awful lot about building character and so forth and so on. So I think Chandler will, will, will matriculate through the system fine. He's a, a high-energy youngster. 
he just learning like most freshmen. We're very pleased with the progress he's making. Great answer. Thank you, Coach. I'll let you uh, enjoy your dinner a little bit here, and uh, we'll bring Chandler up. I'll remind our uh, Seminole fans that Florida Farm Bureau members get free tickets to select FSU men's basketball games. Just visit myffbf.org to sign into your account. Then follow the prompts for attractions and sports and sporting events to get your two free tickets. Tickets are offered on a first-come, first-served basis and are subject to availability. If you're not a Farm Bureau member, again, visit myffbf.org and register to become a member today. Farm Bureau Insurance, proud to support Seminole Athletics. Chandler, Chandler Jackson is up next. This is Inside Seminole Basketball from Learfield. Coach Hamilton will rejoin us momentarily, but right now I'm joined by Chandler Jackson, a 6'5 freshman from Memphis, newcomer to the Florida State program. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. That coach gave you guys the day off just for your birthday yesterday. Oh, that was nice. I know. That was very special of him. <laughs> All right. Memphis to, uh, to FSU. Uh, tell us the attraction. Uh, you know, when, when did you decide on Florida State? What were the reasons? Um, I remember came on my visit. It was... October 22nd, I think, of 2021, I came on my visit with my family. And as soon as I got here, I kind of knew I wanted to come here. And then we had the meeting with Coach Ham, my family. And then that's when I knew that this was home. I told him right there. And I kind of wanted to surprise Coach Jones with it because that's who was recruiting me. And so he didn't know, but I told him like right before we left. And Gave me a big hug, big hug. Stan Jones with, uh, with roots up that way. Well, congratulations on that decision. Now, uh, the Seminole fans may not be aware your dad played college basketball at Western Illinois for four years, I think. So uh, that's a little different maybe than some kids who are being recruited because there's a different lens there. You have somebody who's played uh, college basketball. Uh, but, but just tell me a little bit about how that helped prepare you for where you are now, the fact that you had a dad who'd kind of been there, done that. Um, it's prepared me a lot, I think. But um, sometimes I'm kind of hard-headed and don't listen to him. And he doesn't like that because, you know, he's been there in my shoes where I am. So with me just, like, growing up, getting more mature, just listening to him and what he has to say uh, with everything that he's been through. He's been playing basketball now. And you're professionally about 13 years now. So just me, like, listening to his advice because everything that I'm going through, he's been through. And so just having – somebody that's older to help help me get through some things is, is really nice. So. Here, here's the true test. Have you gone back to him and said, you know what, Dad, when you told me that two years ago, no. you, were, you were right. No, you haven't done that yet? Oh, no, not yet. All I right. don't want to give him that satisfaction yet. Okay. All right. Well, we'll get there at some point. At some point we yeah. will. All right. So, uh, you know, you come to FSU and you don't want to get hurt at any point, obviously, but you're out with a thumb injury for, for eight weeks or so. And I, I don't know when a good eight-week period to be injured would be, maybe April and May, but it's certainly not when preseason practice is starting. So, so how much do you feel like that sets you back in terms of even where you are now or how much have you recovered from that at this point? Uh, it set me back a lot. Um, you know, I was doing good here, and I was progressing really well, and then just not, you know, being able to touch a ball for two months, really, with my dominant hand, really just it hurt me. You know, watching the team go through training camp and everything, and going over like playing against each other, inner squad scrimmages and stuff like that, and me just like watching on the side and. Uh, Coach Jones wanted me to get in shape, so I'd be running while they're playing, and I'd be watching. I'd be, uh, I'd be on the side, kind of sad, you know, because I wanted to be out there with them. And so, missing the first couple games, I really wanted to be out there. But when I got the chance to be out there, I was super excited. I've been, I was waiting to get back. I was waiting, even though I didn't, I didn't prepare myself the right way. I still was ready to get there. And right now, I think I'm recovered straight. It's been. It's been a long time, I think, since the injury and everything. And, you know, I'm been, I've been working and getting more confident in myself and getting back to where I was. So I feel like I recovered pretty well. We're talking with uh, FSU freshman Chandler Jackson. Player interviews, by the way, presented by Rising Spear to support Florida State student-athletes and donate. Head to the website, risingspear.com. Chandler, uh, I asked Coach this question, so only fair that I ask it to you. What, what's been the, the toughest part 
and maybe tough's not the right word, but if you were going to rank everything in terms of the transition, not just the Tallahassee and FSU, but college basketball overall? Um, just learning something over again, uh, like the system. You know, um, in high school, you was there for four years. That's what you know. And then you come in here, you go into something completely different. So with me, I think it was just learning the system offensively and defensively. Um, you know, I got, you know, at growing, you know, coming as a freshman, you're not going to know stuff right away. But I kind of got mad at myself, you know, for not getting it right away. And, you know, just, you know, having a coach there to just talk me through and, you know, make sure I realize that it's okay if I don't get it the first time. It's it's gonna come. So, just kept sticking with it and just kept learning. That's that's probably number one. And then number two is probably how fast. It's faster than I thought. Like how people play. Um, it got it caught me off guard. It's like when we were scrimmaging like together. It, I was very surprised. But I think I adjusted to that now. And it's you know it's something that I like. You know, it's something that I like to do. All right, we are talking with Chandler Jackson, and we're just getting started. More to come. We'll learn a little bit more about uh, Chandler away from basketball. We'll do that when we continue. This is Inside Seminole Basketball from Learfield. <laughs> Welcome back to Glory Days Grill. We'll continue our conversation with uh, Chandler uh, Jackson. And by the way, Chandler's going to stick around and sign some autographs, take some pictures after this for those of you here over in the Legends room. So hang out for that. All right, Chandler, Chuck stole the thunder uh, for those that are here in the audience. <laughs> this will be the one million and first time you've been asked this question. But apparently Chandler is named after Chandler Bing from, uh, from Friends. Uh, elaborate. Who was the, your, your mom, your dad, who was the big fan here? The it was story. My, it was my nana. She she chose she got the name. My I think my family like each I have four names. So I think uh, my grandparents got to choose all four because I have both sets. So I think my nana got my first name, and my granny or grandpa got one of my middle names, and then of course my last name was my dad's. All right, so we'll come to the the middle names here in a moment. But I was looking this up, and and friends last episode. I think might have been before you were born, or it was pretty close. Was, yeah. Have you even watched the show? Do you like the show? Like, truth, it's just us talking here. Truth, man to man, yes, I do like the show. I've watched it. Okay. All I've right. Well, that's it. good. If you're going to represent the name channel, I just want to check. So uh, your, your middle two names, Matthew and Joseph, both biblical in nature, and I guess your grandfather's a pastor or a preacher. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, sir. He's a, yes, sir. He's a pastor. Okay. He makes sure I'm in church every Sunday, every Sunday, even when I'm here. All he right. He makes sure. All right, as it should be. Good to, good to hear. All right, tell us a little bit about your hometown of Memphis. Uh, I love Memphis. It's, it's a great city. It's a beautiful city, too. Um, you know, it's home for me no matter what happens. No matter where I go, it's always going to be home. And I, I like it there. Downtown Memphis is a, it's a great place to visit, actually. Like, your tourists, it's a good place to visit. But, you know, like growing up there, see, you, get to, you see it every day. And so you kind of, like, you question why everybody like it, but then when you come back home after a minute and you're like, yeah, it's a, it's a good place to be. If you're going to pick one or the other, food or music? The food, the for food. sure. Okay. Yes. On Bill Street, yes. The food, 1,000%, is really, really good. But music can't be too far behind, though. The food is nice. All right, the food all right, is nice. all right. The we got food it. is nice. We got it. All right, so tell us, what, what are some of your hobbies uh, when you're not playing basketball? And I realize when you're a college basketball player, there's not a lot of time that you're not playing basketball if you want to excel. But uh, what do you do when you're decompressing? So when, it's, when I get home and it's by, I'm by myself, I play the game. I play my PS5. And the only game I really play on it is Madden. I, that's all I play. I'm, I play it all the time. It's like from when I get home, I'll probably get home like at 8, between 8.30 and get in my shower and everything. And then I call my friends and then we just get on and play until we get tired. Not too late, though. I don't be up all night. I have a son, so I know what it looks like when somebody's playing Madden <laughs> obsessively. <laughs> um, I, should, I ask these questions out of order. <laughs> uh, I should have gone with this one. Then. When you're not playing basketball and you're studying, what do you, what do you plan to pursue here at FSU in terms of in the classroom? Um, I want to be a uh, communications major. Kind of like what we're doing right now and talking right now. This is kind of what I want to do when I get older and when I'm done with basketball. I kind of want to do something like this because this – it's fun. You know, you get to sit here and just talk in front of people and talk about sports. So I like, and I love talking about sports. I talk about sports with 
anybody and everybody. So this is basically what I want to do when I get older. Mm -hmm. This right here and probably take it to on TV, like with on ESPN and NBA games. That's how far I want to go with it. But this right here is like perfect because that's what I like to do. Well, very cool. You're well on your way. Congratulations there. Uh, final, final thought for you. Obviously, Florida State's been a highly successful program under Coach Hamilton. You coming from a high school at, at Christian Brothers. I think you were 49-1 and one your last two years, 28-0 a year ago, state champs. You're Mr. Basketball in the state of Tennessee. That's a lot of winning and a lot of success, and, and obviously this year hasn't unfolded that way. So how tough is that mentally right now to, to, to stay positive to, to keep a winning culture, which is what Coach Ham has established as you, as you got a couple more games to go. I mean, yeah, it is hard because, you know, things aren't going right. But, you know, the stand positive side, it's, it's going to get better. You know, we only can go up from here. And so we, we have time. So, I mean, you know, this year is not the best, but we still have next year to, to prove what we can do, uh, you know, and bring back Seminole basketball. So, like, I'm really not – it's really not – as bad, you know, you look at the perspective, like we still have a chance to do, we still have a chance to win games. We still have the ACC tournament. We still have these last couple of games we have left. So, I mean, it's not done yet. And so that's what I keep looking at. And that's what I keep thinking in my head and keep trying to motivate everybody on the team each game. Um, each game, I keep reminding them that we still got this. We still can shock, we still can shock people no matter what happens, no matter what our record is. We still can go to the ACC tournament and win. Great attitude, great mindset. Congratulations on your playing time, your decision here at FSU. How about a round of applause, everybody who's here at uh, Glory you. Days Grill for Chandler Jackson. Thank you all. Thank you. I, I look forward to you taking my job someday. Good luck to you. Thank you so much. All right, Leonard Hamilton will be back momentarily, and we'll wrap things up here on Inside Seminole Basketball from Learfield. And some final comments from head coach Leonard Hamilton momentarily. I'll remind you that Truist is a proud partner of Seminole Athletics and the official retail bank of Florida State. Care, it's a total bank changer. See how at Truist.com. Coach Chandler looks like he's well on his way to a broadcasting <laughs> communications. He's pretty comfortable behind the mic there. Well, he's very comfortable. He's a fine young man. Been, he's raised in the church by, by his, his grandfather. And he, has his, um, he has a great moral compass. Yeah, you can see that just in the little interaction we had. It's uh, time now for the Scott and Wallace keys to success, Coach. You've got a, a road trip to Miami this week. Uh, you got some extra days, as you pointed out, though. <laughs> uh, it give it the schedule giveth and taketh away with that short turnaround for North Carolina. But keys to success against Miami. Well, there's no doubt that we need to be on our defensive game against Miami because they have five guys on the floor that are capable of going off for of 20 points in, 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 in all five positions. So that's the number one thing. And then offensively. I think we got to be a little more patient and we got to execute a little bit better and get better higher percentage shots. That game is uh, 4 o'clock on Saturday against Miami. Jeff Colhane and Adrian Crawford will, ha will have the call. Scott and Wallace, the official law firm of the Florida State Seminoles, 222-7777, offices in Tallahassee. Coach, uh, you've been at this a while. So has uh, Jim Laranega. I don't know how many times you guys have gone head-to-head, -head, but uh, uh, any, any – uh, Anecdotes you want to share about crossing paths with uh, with Coach Larry? You're both on the on the Naismith list this year uh, for for the Hall of Fame, and uh, so well established and, and highly successful at your craft. Well, I heard that rumor. I wasn't for sure it was actually true, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I've known Jim for a long time. He's very passionate about what he about his team, his, his system, uh, and, and he has them just where he wants them right now. They are really playing excellent basketball. And that goes a lot of credit to, to he has to go to his staff for finding the right guys with the right character and the right talent that fit the system that he wants to use. I know uh, you're, you're focused on Miami right now. We've talked about it, but you get a six days for them, a day to get ready for North Carolina. Then you get five days for Virginia Tech. But then you get in a tournament play <laughs> where you hope you're playing every day. So it's a little, a little odd the way it's stacked together here the final couple weeks of the season. Well, that's college basketball, and you just have to accept it and prepare yourself for it. Well, and, uh, and, and you'll do that. Coach, uh, uh, have a good week of practice this week. Well, thank you very much. And um, I want to once again thank our fans for, for the support they've been giving us this year, even though we've been in a down year. I've been so impressed with the enthusiasm and the consistency that our fans are supporting us with. And I want to thank them. We appreciate that very, very much. 
And don't forget, uh, senior night is a week from tonight at the Tuck when North Carolina comes to town. Tar Heels and Knowles, that'll be next Monday night. But it's uh, Knowles and Canes this Saturday as Coach Hamilton and the Knowles look to get back on track. Leonard, thank you and have a great week. Thank you. That Miami game uh, airtime is 3.30. As I mentioned, Jeff Colhane and Adrian Crawford will have the call uh, of that game on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. For Coach Tom Block saying so long. Thanks for joining us. And as always, go Knowles. <laughs>